Good morning, everyone. Uh, Maria Gonzalez here, just uh, wanting to just check in with everyone. And um, we decided, good morning, everyone, just uh, checking in here and um, just wanting to say hi and uh, just kind of have a little bit of a conversation with, uh, with you all, um, you know, just basic life uh stuff right now i know um a lot of us are dealing with a lot of things and uh we're we're here in the trenches with you um vida del norte where i'm coming to you live here from vida del norte and we are working on on getting some resources out to parents and just having some live conversation with with everybody and uh really kind of getting the conversation going as to some of the things that are are going uh on in our world today <clears throat> i'm going to give uh, a few more minutes for some people to get on this is my first time ever doing a live on facebook so i'm a little bit new to this so bear with me if uh i seem a little bit off Um, I'm not even too sure where to see where everyone is. I can see there's two people watching. If you can see me, say hi. So part of um, this initiative or this idea to have um, morning coffee and conversation um, I think I'll be starting to do this on Fridays, uh, especially because the kids, uh, well, the majority of our kids here in the Cuesta area uh, don't have school on Fridays. And so I'm, I'm assuming that parents will have an opportunity to have a little bit of a break. And, and um, if you're sitting in your living room and having, uh, converse, having just coffee, and you want to chat and kind of we can use this as a way to support each other as parents and we're here to support parents and uh, really just start talking about some of the things that are happening with our youth and our community um, so i hope to see you all good morning Lori. i'm i'm glad that you're on and um, i can't i don't know how to see who's on i guess i i'll get better at this as i go so if you guys are on, please check in and say hi and let me know you're here. If you have any questions or something that um, that you're that you want to know about of what's going on in our community, then you know feel free to ask or some of the things that we're doing. Um, that's that's a, a great uh, way for us to start this conversation. I guess what I I want to talk a little bit about. Um, which I, I did want to say a few things uh, about is uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the numbers that um, we got from our Youth Risk and Resilience Survey that was conducted in the fall of September of 2019. We conduct this survey every two years and um, in, it was conducted for the first time in 2015 and we received some data back and, and that's basically how we uh, set our model for, for Vida del Norte and some of the targets that we wanted to, to touch base on. So um, in 2015, and this was before um, we were granted uh, the funding for Vida del Norte. So we, uh, we took this number, we took this survey, and we took these numbers. So the, the questions on the survey ask, um, our students, um, have you had at least one drink of alcohol in the last 30 days? So um, in 2015, 43.4% of our 9th through 12th grade students reported that they had had at least one drink in the past 30 days. Um, that's, that's quite a high average, especially for the population that we have here in uh, Cuesta. We, we, we have a population of about 200 students in our school district, and when, uh, when we have 43.4%, um, that's a, a little under half of our students reporting that they're drinking alcohol in 30 days. 
And then um, we had we saw a little bit of a decrease in 2017, which is we dropped to a 39.3%, which is about two to three percent of a decrease, which is really exciting news because then we're uh, we're seeing uh, seeing it drop. Now, when we got our results this summer, uh, for from from the survey that was done in uh, 2019. Uh, we jumped up 20%. Our, um, our, our, our use for a, among high school students went up to 59%. That's almost 60% 60, 60 of our student population, which means out of a student population of 200, almost 140 students report drinking alcohol in the last 30 days. So that is um, just one of the concerns that we have with alcohol and um, what we're trying to do to, to fix it is, um, is just, uh, we're working, we have an alcohol uh, reduction team, it's called ART, it's a, an alcohol team who um, works together. Uh, they're part of our coalition. We have uh, business owners, local uh, alcohol vendors and business owners and, and some community members that are working on that team. So if anybody is interested in participating um, in that group to help uh, reduce substance use, then uh, please feel free to contact us and we'll get, uh, we'll get you um, on, on that group. So some of the things that we've looked at uh, potentially doing to help decrease this is, you know, we want to be able to provide some opportunities for our, our youth in our community. So, um, you know, we're very limited as to what we can do right now. Um, but over the summer, we were able to um, have a couple of movie nights, outdoor movie nights, and we're, we're, we're trying to get these to where they're family friendly uh, so that families can participate and uh, so that our youth can join in and just uh, provide a comfortable space for uh, people to be able to come and have uh, a nice nice time with, with one another without alcohol present. Uh, based on a lot of the conversation that we've had uh, with, with our students. Um, great, thank you, Nikki. I just saw your comment of uh, where you said, I would love to teach the kids in the community natural modalities to help with positive coping mechanisms. That's great. Um, we, uh, we're, we're looking at how we're gonna be able to do that. We're thinking of maybe starting to conduct some workshops here, um, either via Zoom or if we do it live, like we're doing here on Facebook, um, we, we can start uh, creating an audience of people who are interested in doing that. And, and we're also wanting to reach out to adults. Uh, one of the things that we talk about within our community um, is that, it, you know, alcohol has become such a big uh, part of our culture and it's not just here in, in the Cuesta area, it happens nationwide. We, when I, when I attend trainings, um, it seems to be a common theme among all of the coalitions of where alcohol has become this regular culturized um, substance that, um, that it's just a regular part of people's everyday life. So we're trying, one, one of the things that we'd like to see happen is to really try to change that culture and, and show our, our youth and show some of our families that you don't always need alcohol to have a good time and have fun. So um, last year we um, held a, a New Year's Eve party, which was a really big success. We were able to have uh, several uh, community members come. We had a DJ, we had food and uh, you know, families just came and, and played games and danced and had a, had a really good evening, uh, which was one of the starts of how we thought that this would be um, a really good uh, way to, to get community members involved in having those uh, fun events without alcohol. Um, of course, you know, we are all living in, in this new reality where we, we can't have large gatherings and we, um, we can't be together. I mean, Thanksgiving's coming up and I know a lot of families are really disappointed that we're not able to gather. But I mean, we, what are, there's some, there's other ways we can, we can do these things for, you know, on Zoom, we can 
set up um, activities for families to do. We can have dance contests. I don't know what we, what we can do, but we need to get creative and start uh, giving our families some resources of fun things that they can do without having alcohol present in, in, their, in their everyday lives. Now, with that being said, um, I know uh, one of the things that um, has also been brought up uh, is is that you know alcohol is being sold at a really high rate right now, and so so that that's an indication that a lot of adults are are drinking a lot more to cope with the with the situation at hand. So. Um, we do have some real issues on ha on our on our plate and we're really trying to figure out some creative ways to to bring um awareness to to the to the dangers of alcohol especially with our youth um it's you know we we have uh, our brains don't fully develop till we're about 25 years old so when you add any kind of uh, foreign substance into your body um it it, it uh, keeps the brain from developing fully so um, we're that's one of the concerns that we have with our kids that are are using um, substances uh, is there does anybody have any questions if you have any questions you can type them in the in the chat box or even any suggestions of of some ways that we can um, move these new adventures these new digital adventures into a into a way where it's uh, easy for people to um, access and utilize. I'll give you all a few minutes if there's any questions or suggestions or comments if you know if you have any ideas or what, what, what you may be thinking. Good morning, Felix. Thank you for uh, joining us. That's awesome, Nikki. Thank you for uh, for that. I she she's saying that she can do free virtual workshops for parents and kids. That's great. We would really. Um, I think I think uh, you're on Facebook. I belong to one of your groups. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and um, and get in touch with you so we can see how we can set some of those things up. Good morning, Ozell. Uh, what are some other things we I know that there's some parents on here um, uh, Ozal you're one of you're one of the parents what are some things that maybe you would like to know uh, about how to kind of you know maybe have discussions with your kids about substance use um, or maybe you guys just need a place to even just talk about things that are happening especially now I know I know we're all feeling really overwhelmed with um, having to have our kids at home. If you're a working parent, you're, you're juggling work from home and trying to teach your kids. So what are some other things that we can do to kind of also help support families? Here, um, let me, I have a resource that I'm gonna put in the chat. So um, most parents can, can um, it's free resources and there's several, um, free resources and um, several different webinars that parents could uh, reach. Um, and it's, let me find it really quick and I'll post the link so that whoever can uh, click on the link a little bit later on um, will be able to look at it. And there's several things. It's how, you know, there, it, there, it, it's really great. It's called Operation Parent and it, um, 
and it gives a whole bunch of resources for for parents on on way on on what things that are happening talking about substance use uh talking about uh other things like um other things such as suicide uh depression there's there's a whole lot of things that this operation parent uh, talks about and they have uh, full webinars that you can watch it's a really great resource uh, we're working on um, potentially getting um, what's called a parent guide uh, through operation parent so that we can start uh, getting some information out um, how to get that yes Ozel, so tips on how on how to have uh, these have the conversation um, how to have the the discussion in the first place so there's um also another one that samsa puts out and it's called um talk they'll listen it's uh and it's actually an app and it's it's kind of quirky i think anyways because you with, with the app it gives you like these um role-playing scenarios but it is really helpful because it does give some really good um scenarios on there and it's called talk they'll listen and i actually will find that resource for you right now um, and I'll post that in the, in the chat as well, because it is a really good resource and it, and then, uh, the, it also has, and it's an app where you can actually, uh, download onto your phone and then it ha it gives these different scenarios on how you can, um, And on how you can talk to to your your kids, and I'll post that in the chat box as well. Uh, Angel, that's a great point. Maybe some um, kid de-escalation skills uh, class for parents who are feeling overwhelmed with working from home and teaching children. That is awesome. I I really think that that's that's a really great idea. Um, we are um, we're we, you know all of these. This is exactly why I wanted to do this because all of these ideas are really really great. We're um, we're we're talking about how to deal with our kids. You know, and and dealing with uh, de-escalation is is really really important. You know, I I know as a parent, I'm struggling with having to even, uh, you know, there's so much attitude, and then there's so much anxiety, and there's so much stress going on with our kids. It's it's been really really hard to even figure out like, okay, what's what's actually going on with you? Like, how how are us parents really actually trying to? to figure this all out and um and so i love that idea thank you angel um i don't know if you have any idea of where we could uh get someone or get in contact with someone who might be able to um host some kind of a workshop like that if um if you don't want to comment in the in the comment box you can always message me or maybe you and i can can have a conversation and brainstorm a little bit about about that because i think that's a really really good one and and maybe we can reach back into our our past and pull out some of those bms skills that we have uh, available and 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 pull together a little workshop and and figure out how we could teach that that's awesome thank you angel um anything else are there any other questions or or any other ideas out there that people may have give you guys a few minutes to catch up i know sometimes the chat can be a little bit delayed so i'll, I'll wait a little bit um so some of the other things that we're doing as an organization is where uh, we're starting to create and, it, and it's in the beginning process of um it's in the beginning process of what we're wanting to do we're having these uh these meetings so anyone who would be interested in is because we're we're looking at wanting it, it, it initially started out as us wanting to do some uh, mentoring 
type of work for some of our youth and which is it's still you know that's still a big potential part of it and um so we started having a meeting with a group of individuals who were interested in potentially becoming me mentors for um, some of our students and it came from this idea of uh, where we have a lot of our young ladies uh, who, who are very motivated and want to participate in the community and, and want to do these things that, you know, and that, and that kind of came from our Active 8 group. We have a group of, of young women, there's about eight of them that have stayed committed to the coalition, but, but they're all young ladies. And we did have a few young men a while back, but they, they seem to have just kind of fallen off and we're not too sure why um, they didn't give an explanation. They just just kind of I think they just lost interest or maybe the peers we don't we don't really know why they decided but we we thought we would um, open up a mentorship for mainly for our young men uh, and kind of linking them to um, some positive influences you know older men in our community who maybe uh, are doing some uh, like entrepreneur stuff like um, Christopher Michael was one one person that came came up in in the beginning discussions of you know maybe teaching the kids how to fly fish and then we thought well maybe even hunting and guiding and having those kind of survival skills so as as we started to brainstorm we came up with um, with with a group of individuals that we thought we might want to get in contact with we've done that and we had our first meeting um, last week. Yeah, last week we had our first meeting to kind of start developing this uh, this type of program, and um, it's going really well so far. We we're meeting with a, a again on December fourteenth, and uh, we're we're really looking at how we're going to structure it. We we're, we've decided that we want to have it be youth led, so that we know that our what our kids are wanting and and how they um, and how they'd like to see this develop. So that's one of the one of the things that we're we're doing. We're working with a lot of community members on this, so we're we're really excited to get this up and running, and and we'll be moving forward with uh, hopefully uh, getting some some workshops going. And like Nikki, you just mentioned that um, you've got a few of those uh, happening. Gaia is another one who has um, opened up to uh, and willing to do some yoga classes like you're mentioning. So um, that's that's where we're at right now. Um, if there's not any other questions or any other discussion, I'm going to just leave that out there. I'm actually going to put the date uh, the date and the time for our next meeting for that for that development group for our youth and it will be December 14th at uh, five o'clock and it'll be via zoom and we're we're, we're basically calling it um, a mentorship uh, meeting youth for uh, mentorship youth mentorship So anyone who uh, is interested in attending that, um, they can uh, get in contact with me and uh, we'll uh, get you on the email list or uh, send you the Zoom link as well. So, um, all right, everybody, I hope you all have a happy Friday and a good weekend and keep on trucking. <laughs>